Hey everyone, this is Pete, and today we're going to spend some time with one of my all-time favourite 16-bit arcade racers, Super Monaco GP on the Sega Mega Drive. First released at arcades in 1989, the game is, as the title suggests, a follow-up to Sega's early arcade title Monaco GP, but very different in execution. While the original Monaco GP, which released in 1979, was a top-down vertically scrolling racer, Super Monaco GP presented a thrilling twist on the vanishing point formula by allowing the player to enjoy the action from a first-person perspective. The idea for the new game came from Sega's Hisao Oguchi, who was working as a game planner with Sega at the time. He wanted to make a Formula One themed game, and following discussions with his colleagues decided to make it a follow-up to Monaco GP since Super Monaco GP was considered to be a good title. The timing was fortuitous too. Super Monaco GP would come out just in time for Monaco GP's 10th anniversary. There was a touch of bragging also. Aguchi considered the real-life Monaco Grand Prix to be the top event in worldwide racing and saw Sega as a parallel in that it was the top name in arcade gaming. Thus, the two were, in his eyes, a perfect fit for one another. Like most of Sega's other arcade games from the time, Super Monaco GP came in several different cabinet variants. Its deluxe version featured a moving seat, force feedback in the steering wheel, and even a system Sega called Air Drive, in which the cabinet blew air into the player's face during gameplay to enhance the sense of realism, supposedly. Although successful on its original release, the arcade version's use of numerous brand parodies on scenery billboards attracted a lawsuit from the manufacturer of Marlborough cigarettes, Philip Morris. On top of that, the initial release of the game had also attracted a complaint to the US Federal Trade Commission on the grounds that it was advertising cigarettes to children, even though the brand names in the game were fictional. Sega released a conversion kit for the game that removed the adverts in March of 1990, but since many unconverted versions of the game were still out there, Philip Morris sued Sega in February of 1991, demanding a total recall of the game as well as financial compensation. Sega and Philip Morris did eventually settle though, with Sega placing adverts in arcade operator publications to not only replace the game chips to the edited versions, but also pay $200 to any operator who returned their original chips. Not long after the initial arcade release, Super Monaco GP was ported to a wide variety of platforms, including all of Sega's consoles available at the time, the Mega Drive, the Master System and the Game Gear, plus a variety of home computers. Interestingly, none of the conversions were a straight port of the arcade machine and nothing more. In order to add more long-term appeal, a considerable amount of additional content was added to the home versions, and ZX Spectrum port programmer David Shea noted that the intent for the home computer versions in particular was to capture the spirit of the arcade game rather than simply trying for a one-to-one -one recreation. The Mega Drive version was mostly very well received, with the game remaining the top-rated driving title for the system for UK monthly publication Mega well into 1994 and beyond. It also drew praise from publications such as Mean Machines and Rays, though the multi-format magazine Ace was less positive in November of 1990, noting that it didn't offer anything particularly new. Interestingly, Ace rated the Amiga conversion considerably higher a few months later, and had given the arcade original a full 5 stars in mid-1989. Oh, and if you were wondering about the iconic pretty girls in swimsuits who adorn the game's various splash screens, they're actually Playboy models, albeit the swimsuits drawn on by hand after the fact. The title screen girl is Mercy Rooney from the December 1972 issue of Playboy, while the girl on the disqualification screen is Claire Rambo from another issue in 1972. Now you know. With that mystery cleared up, let's go play Super Monaco GP. Okay, here we are with Super Monaco GP from Sega, which is... Uh, like I say, a favourite arcade racer of mine, uh, not just for the Playboy model on the title screen, but also for the fact that it's a cool game as well. So let's hit start and have a go. Now for the unfamiliar, there's a few different ways to play this game. The Super Monaco GP mode is um, basically what the arcade game was. So let's have a go at that first, and then we'll take a, a bit of a look at um, the World Championship mode as well. So you've got three different transmissions to choose from. Uh, automatic transmission means that you don't have to change gears yourself. You've got a four-speed transmission, which lets you go a little bit faster, and a seven-speed transmission that lets you go much faster. So it's actually easy to win if you can handle the seven-speed transmission, uh, but you have to be able to, to work the controls. All right, we'll just go with automatic for now, because I, I can deal with the automatic transmission, but I'm not brilliant at it, so... Sorry, I can deal with the manual transmission, but I'm not particularly brilliant at it. So 
So we'll just stick with the automatic for simplicity's sake right now. So yeah, a lot of cool things about this game. The first person view being the main one. Since a lot of, uh, a lot of racing games up until this point had been third person. And this is effectively working in a similar way to a third person racer in, the, in that your car sprite is the cockpit of the car rather than the car itself. Um, but it just gave it quite a different feel that was rather fun. So we just done the preliminary race there, which establishes our starting position in the race. And what you then have to do is you have to try and complete three laps of the race without letting your position limit expire. So at the moment our position limit is 15th. But as you reach checkpoints on the course, your limit will move further up the pack. So it's now 30... Oh dear. Game over! <laughs> yes, immediate game over if you crash. Um, yeah, retired. Terrible. 119 points. Let's have another go at that, shall we? So yeah, anyway, the, the position limit, like I say, you have to um, you have to stay above that position. Uh, now, interestingly, the position limit will never move beyond where you are in the pack. So that there will never come a point where you are behind where you're supposed to be. But there will come a point where the position limit is the same as your position. Meaning that if you drop any further back than where you are, um, you will immediately lose the race, basically. Missed the flag, man. Right, let's try and do a little bit better this time. Bump into a few friends on the way. Which uh, will knock them out of the race. Yeah, you got to remember you're, you're driving Formula 1 cars in this, which are fairly fragile. So not only do you need to avoid roadside obstacles, you also want to try and avoid hitting the other cars as much as possible. Um, because as easily as you can knock them out of the race, they can also knock you out of the race if you're not careful, so... Right, doing a little bit better this time. As we enter the tunnel. Really horrible hairpin coming up. Right, slow right down for that. Actually handled that better than I think I've ever handled that. <laughs> One thing you have to bear in mind while playing this is that at its core this is a vanishing point racer which means that you're never actually turning when you use the directional controls you are sliding left and right across the road and when you go around a corner the way corners work are they push you towards their outside edge if you slow down a bit that effect is less pronounced But normally what you need to do is steer to compensate for that pushing effect. And get around the corner as best you can. So you see now the position limit is getting perilously close to where we are in the pack. When we hit the next checkpoint, it's going to be on 8th. Which means that if we lose a position from there on, we will immediately lose the race. So we must not let that guy behind us pass. And you will notice that there is the very cool rear view mirror effect at the top of the screen which is kind of revolutionary oh no oh no 
Oh no, don't you dare, don't you dare. Successful blocking. Successful blocking, how about that? I mean, we're not going to get an amazing final result in the race at this point, but we might actually finish it. Get out of here. Oh no, it's all over. Limit over. See, that's pretty tricky um, because it was an arcade game. It was designed to um, swallow your quarters. And so that is difficult. What was added to this console version was the World Championship mode, which is a much more in-depth um, game format, basically. Let's try hard to win. So in this mode, you join a racing team beginning with Minare, or whatever they're called. Um, and you can then have a look at what your current machine is. Uh, you can change your transmission if you want to. Or you can jump straight into the race. So let's do that. So this time around, there's no position limit or anything to worry about. You're just trying to do as well as possible over the course of the championship. And depending on your progress, you can actually end up joining different racing teams, getting new cars and all that sort of thing as well. So although the basic mechanics are the same, Oops. Although the basic mechanics and presentation are the same, there's a lot more to it. And it will last you a lot longer to, to try and sort of perfect your performance. To be fair, the Super Monaco GP mode will also take you a while to perfect your performance as well because it's very difficult. Um, but the World Championship mode has a bit... It's got a bit more of a gradual curve to it. So, terrible qualifying lap there. Pass the cars at the hairpin turn. Solid advice. Now, this is one thing you can do in uh, World Championship mode here, is you can select a rival. So at the moment we are in level C, which is sort of a, a rough level of performance. Uh, level D are, in theory, cars that are worse than us. Level B and level A are better, with Madonna being the absolute top one. So if we take a look at, uh, say, Linden's car performance, you can see what the maximum performance of their car is. So Ibellini from Italy there has got a car that's quite a bit better than us. If we name him as our rival, losing to a junior driver is a disgrace. What we've then got to try and do is beat him. And if we do that, we can potentially win his car. That's a big if, of course. But let's see how it goes. Particularly if I take corners like that, that's going to be a big if. Pass the cars on the hairpin turn, they say. Not like that, I'm not. Now you got the wiggly bit. Oh dear. That was not very good. Yeah, this is not going brilliantly so far. But it's okay. It's still the first lap. It's still the first lap. There's plenty of time to catch up. And master this course. See, we're gaining on someone already.
what you've got to remember about this game is that it, it is an arcade racer at heart. So, although it's often helpful to slow down for corners, you do want to try and keep your speed up as much as possible. But equally, as in other Sega arcade races of the era, you got to remember that slowing down a little bit is much better than slowing down a lot due to a crash or even ending up disqualified for crashing too hard. <laughs> Now we're picking up some positions. I somehow suspect we're not going to beat our rival at this rate. But we are at least making a little bit of progress. Now that we're on the third lap of five. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. He's right, losing to a junior driver is a disgrace. Because this junior driver really sucks. Lock him. And to 13th. It's slow progress, but it is progress. I don't know that it's going to satisfy my team at this rate, though. Because, yes, you can get kicked off your team if you suck too much. That puts you down at the bottom of the league with the sucky cars. Oh no, trouble! So that means you've broken something. So you need to hop into the pits to get everything sorted. Which will inevitably lose a bit of time. And some positions. But you can make it back, potentially. Maybe not on the last lap. But in theory it's possible. Such an important part of this game is learning the tracks and getting a feel for things like how those chicanes work and how you can speed around them as quickly as possible. Okay. Oh, I can't quite pip him. That was not an amazing performance. 15th. Quite poor. No points for us. After all, he is far better than us. Alright, next round. Alright, uh, let's go straight into the race again. On the Brazil Grand Prix this time. So the preliminary race will give us a bit of an opportunity to get a feel for the course. Set a qualifying time. It's not going to be a good time in the car you start with, but... You can get a feel for it, at least. So that's a long corner, but not necessarily a difficult one. This little bit here looks like it might be tricky. Yes, it is. So we want to slow down for that hairpin at the bottom. But everything else on this track looks like it should be relatively straightforward. Oh, 
Maybe that one's quite tight as well. And perhaps this one? No, it's not too bad. Okay, 13th qualifying position. That's not terrible. Well, it, it is quite terrible. It's not the worst it could possibly. Slow down at curves to save your tyres. Select a rival. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set who is, in theory, the worst driver as my rival. I can drive faster than you. We'll see about that. So he's starting just ahead of us. You can see he's the, he's the differently coloured car. In theory, he should be fairly easy to beat. Not if I do that, he's not. I get for getting cocky, isn't it? Oh, we should be easy to beat, of course. No, this one's a bit nasty, isn't it? No, it's that one down at the bottom of the map that's unpleasant. Oh, we're at the back of the pack again. couple of tricky corners coming up. It's that hard left-hander that's a bit nasty. But then we got a lovely long straight. But also, everyone seems to be getting a very long way ahead of us. <laughs> Including our rival, he seems to be doing quite respectfully, respectively, for himself. Come on, little car, go. You can do it. Oh no, it's all over. <laughs> what a disaster. Retire. Get hold of yourself. Let's, uh... <laughs> let's leave that for now now one thing I will do just before we finish let's just have a go at the Super Monaco GP mode again but let's do it in 7 speed mode and you'll see what a difference it makes so in 7 speed mode you change gear by using up and down on the d-pad Curiously, pushing down shifts up, and pushing up shifts down for some reason. But there we go, see, even with that crash there, we got ninth. So you, you just you just flat out go faster if you use manual transmission, so... It's a good idea to get the hang of using that as much as possible.
Oops. And the shift indicator does at least helpfully indicate when you should shift down if you're going too slowly. And then the yellow mark on the rev counter is probably the optimal point to shift up. That hairpin is so difficult to handle effectively, whether you're doing manual or automatic transmission. Not at all mastered it. And I suspect mastering the Super Monaco GP mode in this is all about mastering that hairpin. As soon as you get the hang of that hairpin, and these chicanes down here as well. But these are the chicanes are actually reasonably easy to handle, as I did not demonstrate there at all. Happen, however, is a bloody nightmare. Uh oh. Well, I won't say we did better, but hopefully you can see that the car just flat out goes faster when you're on that mode there as well. Anyway, I think that's probably enough of that for today. That is Super Monaco GP for Sega Mega Drive, which is, uh, like I say, despite its difficulty, and it is difficult, um, it is a favourite 16 bit racing game that is still enjoyable and well worth checking out today. So we'll leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>